Hello learners, welcome to Enatech Qatar Safety Training Center. The aim of this video is you to practically apply the knowledge and understanding that you have gained from your studies. To do this you need to complete the risk assessment of your workplace. Before you start your assessment, you must have completed studies of the whole Nebosh IG syllabus. The whole risk assessment is divided into four stages. The stages of the assessment are as follows. Stage 1 Description of the organization and methodology used. Stage 2 Risk assessment. Stage 3 Prioritize three actions with justification. Stage 4 Review Communicate and Check. This video has been produced to provide you with everything that you will need to complete the assessment. Before starting let's discuss some useful tips to carry out the risk assessment. Tips before starting your assessment. Your risk assessment should not create huge paperwork. You should identify sensible and proportionate measures to control the risks in your workplace. Your risk assessment should be realistic and the level of detail to be proportionate to the level of risk. We have included approximate word counts for each section. Check that your final submission consists of all the relevant parts and you have not missed out any. Stage 1 Description of the organization and methods used This is how your first part of the risk assessment looks like. There are two sections in this. We will be discussing each one of them in this video. You will need to include the following information as a minimum. The name of the organization. Site location for example you don't need to give the full address just the general location Doha. How many workers are employed by the organization? A general description of the organization which must include products manufactured or services provided and the types of activities undertaken and shift patterns worked. A description of the area to be included in the risk assessment and any other relevant information for example who has the day-to-day -day responsibility for health and safety in your organization. If you feel there is nothing relevant here, you do not need to include this in the description. This example is provided by Nebosch for learners reference only. Copying this example is strictly prohibited and could lead to serious malpractice. This is the first box of stage 1 where you are required to provide the description of the organization. This is how the box 2 of your risk assessment should look like. This is the continuation of the stage 1. Here you need to explain how you have carried out the risk assessment and the methodology used. You may also include anything else that is relevant to the completion of the risk assessment. Let's see further in the video what you need to outline. You will then need to outline how you carried out the risk assessment. You will need to include as a minimum the sources of information that you consulted, who you spoke to, and how the hazards and controls were identified. Nebosch recommends that you write 200 words for this explanation. Stage 2 Risk Assessment Key points to remember. Your assessment should have minimum of 10 hazards. 10 hazards must be taken from minimum 5 different hazard categories. Mention the category first in the column followed by the hazard. This helps the examiner to identify hazard categories and nature of the hazard. You will now need to complete a risk assessment of your organization. You must find and record at least 10 different hazards that are taken from at least 5 different hazard categories. For the avoidance of doubt hazard categories are the topic headings for elements 5 to 11 of the IG syllabus which are included below for your reference.
this is how the risk assessment form looks like. It needs to be completed by carefully reading and following the NEBOSH guidance. Start by putting the organization name risk assessment date and risk assessment scope, where the assessment was carried out in the relevant places at the top of the form. Let's look at each column now. In column 1 you need to mention the hazard and the hazard category. In column 2, who may be harmed and how? What you are already doing to control the hazard in column 3. What further controls or actions might be needed in column 4. In column 5 what the time scales are for completion of each action. And in column 6 the role of the person responsible for completing each action. Now we will discuss further in the video with example. In column 1 you need to identify the hazard category first and then the hazard. There are 20 hazard categories and you must pick your hazards from 5 categories or more to score marks in this section. For example in column 1 slips and trips is a hazard category followed by hazard referring to the specific activity or area. You should select hazards that can cause more harm in the form of either physical injury and or ill health. In column 2 is the next step of the risk assessment, here you need to identify who might be harmed and how far each of the specific hazards that have been identified in column 1. You must identify people such as workers, contractors, visitors, public groups of people or individuals who might be exposed to the hazard. You have to write a short description about how these people might be harmed. This should include when and how they are exposed to the hazard and the type of harm it might cause. Third column in completing the risk assessment is to identify the controls that are already in place to control the risks created by each hazard. The fourth column is to describe the additional controls or actions required. Here you need to describe the additional controls that need to be implemented to further control the risks created by the hazards identified in the assessment. When you complete your risk assessment you will see that columns 3 and 4 work together. If you are already doing enough to control the risk, there will be a lot of controls listed in column 3 but very few in column 4. On the other hand if you have very few controls in place column 3 will contain very little and column 4 will contain a lot more. Both of these scenarios are fine because they are realistic. Column 5 is to allocate a time scale to each of the additional control measures identified in column 4. In the time scales column make sure that you write in duration of time like 1 month 2 months and do not provide any deadline states. The last column in completing the part 2 risk assessment form is to allocate a responsible person for each additional control measures identified in column 4. Responsible person can be assigned on the basis of people's job roles and job titles. Responsible person can be supervisors, junior managers, middle managers and senior managers. Stage 3 Prioritize three actions with justification. Now let's prioritize three actions. You must pick the three highest priority slash most urgent actions needing attention from your part to assessment form. These actions can be associated with the same or different hazards or hazard categories. The important thing is that they need to be your highest priorities for action. This is how your part 3 form looks like. This format has been provided by Nebosch for learners use. This is the stage 3 of your risk assessment. Once you have picked the 3 highest priority or most urgent actions needing attention, you must give a justification for why you think these are the highest priority or most urgent actions.
your justification should be based on moral legal and financial arguments for all actions. Consideration of the likelihood and severity of injury detail on how effective each action is likely to be in controlling the risk. Let's look at each justification in details. Moral legal and financial arguments for all actions. Your legal arguments must be based on the International Labour Organization's conventions recommendations and codes of practice. You may also include country-specific legislation but this will not be marked. Nebosch indicates a word count of 500 to 700 words for this section. This is an example provided by Nebosch for justifying moral legal and financial arguments for all actions. This is for reference only. Do not copy this as it will lead to serious malpractice. Consideration of the likelihood and severity. You will need to typically consider the types of injury ill health or harm likely to be created by each hazard. The number of workers at risk, how often the activity is carried out and how widespread the risk is. Example, does the same threat exist in other parts or branches or divisions or sites of the organization? Nebosch indicates a word count of 150 to 250 words for this section. How effective each action is likely to be in controlling the risk. Here you should describe the intended impact of each action. Justification for the time scale for completion for each action. Whether you think the action will fully control the risk. Nebosch indicates word count of 250 to 350 words for this section. This is an example provided by Nebosch for justifying likelihood severity and how effective each action is likely to be in controlling the risk. Stage 4. Review Check and Communicate Review check and communicate is the last stage of the risk assessment. In the first section you must set a realistic review date for the risk assessment and say why you have chosen that review date. Nebosch recommends a word count of 10 to 50 words for this section. In the second section you must explain who you will communicate the findings of the risk assessment to and how. Nebosch recommends a word count of 100 to 150 words for this section. In the third and last section you must indicate how you will follow up on the risk assessment to check that the actions have been carried out. Nebosch recommends a word count of 100 to 150 words for this section. This is the example of three sections of the last stage. This example is for reference provided by Nebosch. Do not copy this. We recommend to contact your learning partner for more information. The assessment must be carried out in your own workplace. If you do not have access to a workplace please speak to your learning partner. The time needed to complete the assessment is not restricted. We do however recommend that you take around three hours to complete all four parts of the assessment. We advise that you discuss your approach with your tutor after reading this guidance. Your assessment can be typed or handwritten. If you wish to type kindly use the electronic form and if you wish to write then use handwritten form. Before submitting your assessment for marking. You may wish to use the checklist included in the assessment pack. Please note that the checklist does not need to be submitted for marking. Your assessment will be marked by an examiner appointed by Nebosch. You will receive a pass or refer for your assessment. If you are interested in our Nebosch IGC training contact us for details. Best wishes for your Nebosch examination.